Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We've been talking about the fullness of the Spirit. Um, guarding the fullness of the Spirit is as important as getting the fullness of the Spirit. Glory to God. And, uh, you know, we talked about how to come into the fullness of the Spirit. And now we're talking about how to guard that fullness. Because, child of God, anything that is worth its salt has to be guarded. Banks are guarded. Homes are guarded. So many things are guarded. Fullness of the Spirit must be guarded. We've been talking about um, several things. We talked about having the knowledge of the Word of God. Studying to show yourself approved. Important in guarding the fullness of the Spirit. We've been talking about guarding against distractions. Distractions are thieves of destiny. Child of God. Distractions are thieves of destiny. Every time one is not focused, it is the destiny that is in contention. Your destiny is tied to how much fullness you walk in. Never forget that. Your destiny is tied to how much fullness you walk in. How much fullness you walk in determines how much destiny is open unto you. Glory to God. So think about that. Then we talked about paying attention to the details of the Spirit. And we talked about how God is a God of detail. God does not speak ambiguously. Even when he speaks in shadows and symbols, the shadows and symbols still have a faculty of details. So our God is a God of details. Today we're going to talk about guarding against pollution. So many Christians, so many Christians do not understand the power of a clean heart and a clean life. The Bible tells us very clearly, Matthew chapter 5 verse 8, the Bible tells us that Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You know, Jesus said something very, very pivotal. He said, if your eye be single, then your body is full of light. Whereas we have the fullness of the Spirit, it can be polluted. You say, what? Yes, it can be polluted. The anointing that God puts in you, remember 1 John 2, 27 says, you have received an anointing from the Lord. And that same anointing shall teach you. Child of God, that anointing contributes to the fullness of the Spirit in your life. But if you don't guard against pollution, that anointing can be corrupted and heresy and deceit can come into your life. One of the things that you should not be gullible about is that pollution can happen. It can happen. And that's why we guard against the fullness of the Spirit. When you look at the prophet called Balaam, a man that was, that, that was, that was so given to controversy, and wanted to receive wages to curse Israel, later was killed by Joshua and called a mad prophet. Why? Because he stopped and failed to guard against pollution. How about uh, King Saul? How about King Saul consulting with the witch of Endor? It was inevitable how he came out. It was inevitable how the situations and events stand out. You think about it, pollution. So Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verses 1 says, um, Dead flies, glory to God, cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking sail. Glory to God. Think about this. Dead flies. Dead flies signify dead things. Dead flies signify dead doctrines, dead teachings, false teachings, false doctrines. Glory to God. Dead flies signify people that are so focused on the things that are not important. So many people that are preaching and, and preaching doom and preaching devils and preaching and not teaching the glory of the Christian and the glory of Christ as a dead fly. Child of God, when you come into the fullness of the Spirit, it is very particular. One of the things you have to avoid is dead flies, as the Bible says. The Bible says it sends forth a stinking savor. Why is that important? Because the tabernacle was full of a sweet fragrance. The anointing was made of sweet calamus. It was made of fragrances, frankincense, very good 
savers and ointments and things like that that had a good aroma as they came up into the nostrils of God in worship and intercession. The child of God, when one entertains pollution in their lives, what happened to Judas? Judas walked in the fullness of the delegated anointing. These guys cast devils out. These guys healed the sick. Literally accompanied Jesus as he raised the dead. But when he entertained the pollution of religion and the pollution of politics and of the pollution of church politics, something happened, child of God. Something happened to Judas. He lost his estate as an apostle of first church. Now you think about this. Every time we forget that we have to guard the waters, the waters of the Spirit have to be guarded. The waters of the Spirit have to be guarded. Child of God, you think about it. Jesus warns about false prophets. Why? Matthew 24. You know, Paul says in the last days, false teachers shall avail themselves. Why? Because it's possible to pollute that fullness. It is possible. Diotrephes in 3 John was a man that began well and was now polluted. Demas, Paul talks about Demas. He said Demas has departed to Thessalonica. A person that began well and now ended in pollution and corruption. You have to be very insistent, very sensitive and very articulate. Glory to God. To things that can pollute you. There are people who have not had a proper foundation. One of the ways of guarding against pollution is making sure, examining your foundation, examining your way to see if you stand. Going into the depth of the word of God and letting the word of God shine into your life. Letting the word of God examine your life. Letting the word of God bring a standard to your life. We must kick pollution out. There's so many things that are being tolerated today in the church. There's so many things that are being tolerated today in the church that do not belong in the body of Christ. The Bible clearly tells us what the standard is. So, child of God, I want you to look at a few things here. People that always talk about devils. I understand there is a balance somewhere. But people that always talk about devils know the depths of the kingdom of darkness and have no understanding of the light of the throne of God, the light of the beauty of God, the light of the angels of God, hallelujah, the light of the word of God, the light in the saints of God, the glory of the saints. People that do not have such understanding will invite pollution or will bring dead flies to that ointment. Glory to God. Because it's, it's the ointment of the perfume because it is delicately put together. It is delicately put together. What is delicately put together by the Holy Spirit can be polluted. We must guard against it. Pride. Hallelujah. Pride. Self-exaltation. Presumption. You know, one that is born of the Spirit must be led of the Spirit. One that is born of the Spirit. And it's very important to know this. One that is born of the Spirit must determine to be led of the Spirit. Or else they risk being polluted. They risk being polluted. Hallelujah. And you know, these are very seemingly uh, simple facts, but they are pivotal to their life saving. The fullness of the Spirit has come on many men before, and they lost it because they invited pollution. Look at Samson, the story of Samson. There was no need for Samson to go after Delilah. There was no need for Samson. There was absolutely no need for Samson in the book of Judges to go after Delilah. Absolutely no need. But you know what? We are enticed into sin by our own lusts. So the Bible says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. If you want to see God, if you want to see the fullness of the Spirit, focus on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your gaze on Jesus. Don't take your eyes off Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, the Bible says. Hallelujah. Why? Because pollution is inevitable where truth is dim. I'll say it again. Pollution is inevitable where truth is dim and truth is discarded. You cannot expect 
to have those fresh living waters flowing out of your belly when you're constantly entertaining the world in your life. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Glory to God. And you know, I love that scripture that says that the love of God constrains us. It constrains us to holiness. Hallelujah. It constrains us to purity. It constrains us to soundness of mind. And more important, it constrains us to abiding by the laws of the spirit of life. Glory to God, I feel like having a praise break. <laughs> Hallelujah. Think about this. God is so good. God is so good that not 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 just not just uh, <clears throat> not just the fact that we see so many things happening that he does, but in his word we test of the honey, we test of the goodness, we test of the depth. You know the Bible says the word of God is honey, sweeter than the honeycomb. Hallelujah. Think about it. In the scriptures we find a cure for pollution. Jesus clearly said it in Matthew 4 verse 4. Man shall not live on bread alone. Man shall not live on additives. Man shall not live by genetically modified messages, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. We live in a day where pollution is everywhere. You see it, you hear it, you smell it. What is the remedy? Child of God, the word of God, the spirit of God. Where that spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty from pollution. Maybe you lost your ministry. Maybe you had an anointing and you lost it. Maybe God used to use you in a mighty way and you lost it. Child of God, you can gain it back by first cutting away the pollution. Cut away the pollution. Bad association can pollute you. Wrong doctrine can pollute you. Self-ambition can pollute you. Glory to God. Going with the tide can pollute the fullness. You need to be in the place where God and you are alone. You need to be in the place where the word of God and you are having a conversation without boundaries. Glory to God. And your life will never remain the same again. You know, I'm so excited about one thing. God warns Adam about pollution right in the Garden of Eden. Say what? God warns Adam about pollution, the possibility of pollution right in the Garden of Eden. He says you might eat of every tree, but do not touch the tree. And what does man do? Doesn't take it seriously. Glory to God. But since Jesus Christ came, and God, like in the Garden of Eden, said, do not do this, but now, right there, oh, I love this, right there at the Jordan, the voice came and spoke, and said, this is my beloved son, hear him. Now we must do what Adam did not do. We obey the command of God. We hear the Lord Jesus. We hear the Lord Jesus. We live for him. We love him. We obey him. Glory to God. We are in fellowship with him. Glory to God. Now, child of God, I want to end with this. It is not obvious that pollution has set in. So we have to constantly, according to the fourth chapter of the book of Mark, we have to constantly examine both the seed and the soil. I'll say it again. It is not obvious that pollution has set in. There are people who are so smart. There are so many carefully devised fables. You know what Peter said? We have not believed cunningly devised fables. We have to constantly examine our hearts and examine the type of seed 
you put in there. Because anything you put in there, the heart is an atmosphere to give life, has an atmosphere, and is literally an atmosphere that gives life to anything you put in. Glory to God. So we have to pay attention. Know the Bible. Know your Bible. Glory to God. And let your Bible live on the inside of you. Let those words jump out of the pages of the scriptures. Glory to God. And live on the inside of you. That word became flesh and dwelt among them. It has to become flesh in you. If pollution is going to be read from your life and ministry. In the name of Jesus. Concerning this, I want to pray for you. I want to pray that God will read pollution of your life. I want to pray that God will bring you into that place where you have a craving for the purity of your spirit, your life, your ministry, your destiny in the name of Jesus and shun every work of evil, even the very appearance of pollution and evil that you may shun it off in Jesus name. Father, I pray that the shackles and the seeds of pollution will be destroyed and overridden in the name of Jesus. And that you bring the sons and daughters of the kingdom of God into liberty in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. That's what we wanted to talk about today. God bless you. Thank you for listening. In Jesus' name.